Oh, so it's 2020. It's 2020. And uh, I I remember saying in the beginning of this year, this is the, the end of January, I, I remember saying I wasn't going to do as many Please Don't Make a Scene episodes as usual because I wanted to focus on making video essays. Well, the video essay thing, it's, it's taking a while because... I'm kind of nervous about writing such a uh, such an expansive uh, uh, script as I am for this first one, and uh, I'm a little I'm a little nervous about that. But it's coming along. It's gonna take a while, but it's coming along. But in the meantime, I thought, why not make an episode of Please Don't Make a Scene? Because the first movie I saw this year, well, technically. The second movie I saw this year. The first movie I saw this year was Jojo Rabbit, and you can watch a spoiler cast for that movie right up here. Me and my sister talked for like an hour about that movie. So check that out. But the second movie I saw this year was one that I was recommended last year. I was told it was the greatest movie of 2019 that no one would ever see. And I was like, oh damn it. I wish I could see that one. And then I could. Because there was one or maybe even two screenings here in Sweden. So I decided to go see the movie we're about to review. And the movie we're about to review is So Long My Son. In So Long My Son, two married couples adjust to the vast social and economic changes taking place in China from the 1980s to the present. Now that's the description on IMDb for what the what the movie is about and that is definitely what it is about it is definitely a a a almost like a like a like a documentary of how like economic political and socio-political changes um affected the people of China from the 80s up until now um but it's also a very very intimate personal story of these two couples and how their lives change you know from being these young carefree couples who then almost at the same time or at the same time each have a child they're both sons uh, uh boys who become great friends and then there is a a a absolutely devastating tragedy that uh, happens and it affects both couples it's gonna be a slight spoiler here i mean i know other reviewers who've talked about this that i've i've read or if i watched uh, the review they have mentioned this because it happens very early in the movie but but still uh spoilers one of the boys drown uh when they're like seven or eight years old and uh this causes something of a rift between the two couples because the 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 other boy who survives um is somewhat responsible for the boy drowning so yeah one of the couples feels the this immense uh, guilt over their son killing their best friend's son and the couple who lost their child they feel a a great sadness of course and but this is something that they all have to deal with while china goes through these 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 huge changes from the 1980s up until the present so yeah, it's a it's a it's a a sprawling dramatic epic of a nation in change, but at the same time it is a very a very intimate and very personal story of 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 love and loss and and uh... however, um, this is one of those movies that I have to say that I I didn't really get it. Not that I don't get why people like it, because like I said. I really liked it. For, for what I could enjoy of it, I really, really liked. I really even, I think I loved it. But what I mean when I say I don't get it is that I literally wasn't able to follow along. Because, first of all, the movie jumps back and forth between the 80s and 90s and the early aughts or not, the early years of the new millennium, if you will, in an effort to make the story more dynamic. Uh, some vital information is intentionally kept from the audience, and while everything is resolved towards the end, I was still you know, scratching my head while the credits rolled. And actually, as I was walking from the theater to the subway to go home, I was trying to figure out, like, what was it that I missed? What detail was it that I didn't pick up on that made the movie so hard to wrap my head around? 
Um, and I don't want to... Well, no, let's just get into it. I missed the part where the, the couple whose son drowned adopted a new child. When they cut from their son drowning to, I guess, like four years later, and they have a, a preteen boy now living with them, I was like, wait, didn't he die? Is this the other couple's son? Did they give him, give them their, their son as, like, I don't know, ab absolution or, or, or something for, for, like, a consolation? I don't understand. I was so confused at who this new kid was, and it just turns out it was an adopted son that they, have, that they got so as to replace their, their uh, 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 dead son. And I don't know if I just missed that little detail, but for the life of me, I can't remember them ever mentioning an adopted son. I don't know, maybe I just missed that. So I was confused about that detail. Like, where did this son come from? But even beyond that, I absolutely loved the story they were telling. And I, I like I said, I, I can't really put the blame on the writer and the director because I just missed a detail, a very important, vi very vital piece of information, but I missed it. I mean, it's in there. People have mentioned it. That's how I found out about it. And also because the writer and director, uh, they do a tremendous job to make such an epic and sprawling tale feel so intimate and personal. So even if I wasn't able to fully enjoy the movie, um, what I could enjoy was magnificent. All the actors do a terrific job, but unfortunately it wasn't anyone I recognized. I haven't watched that many Chinese movies in my life. The performances were so spot on, they were so so believable and so emotional that uh, uh, the, the language wasn't a barrier for me at all. But it was not all, not that, I mean, not only that. You had the, the, the beautiful score that was used sparingly to, to emphasize every scene where it was needed. Because most of the three hour runtime, there is no music. But then there are these little stings here and there to really just punch a hole in your, your emotions. And you're like, I'm supposed to feel something here, like, but in a good way, not in an emotionally manipulative way, more like a, a, a emotional uh, amplification, and it was just, just perfect. Ultimately, So Long, My Son is a wonderful movie that can be a little hard to follow along because of the non-linear storytelling. I can't be alone in thinking that, I hope. Jeez, I hope so. But I think that the non-linear storytelling is a gift and a curse, though. The curse we've already discussed, it's the, the, the confusion. But the gift is that a story like this would not be as interesting if it was told in a linear fashion. Because it is a 30, almost 40 year long story where not many big pivotal things happen. But what they have done is they have rearranged these big dramatic moments in a, in a, in a lifetime, which is almost this, to where they, they build towards a, a crescendo and a climax in the end. And that's what makes it so amazing the way they told this in a non-linear fashion. So in the end, I would say that it is the better choice of storytelling despite the drawbacks. But that's that. That's so long, my son. Um, definitely, definitely recommend this one. I know it's very early in the year, and I've only seen two new movies. I mean, I guess they both technically from 2019, but for me, they're new. Um, and I said this about Jojo Rabbit 2. This is probably the best movie I have seen this year. Um, but we'll see if there's any movie that will beat this one. It would be interesting, because usually my favorite movies comes like the middle to, or towards the end of the middle of the year so we'll see how long this one lasts but uh yeah if you get the chance to watch it either you know stream it somewhere buy it on dvd or if they actually show it um where you live take the chance to watch it it is very long but it's totally worth the time it does not feel like three hours at all because it is so so masterfully crafted so yeah Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, and, and thank you to Indie Tricks Film Reviews or, or William Webb, who, run the, who runs that channel. Um, he's the one that that uh, talked about the movie la late last year, 
Uh, if he hadn't talked about it, I would never have watched it. So I want to thank you for, for putting me onto that movie. And uh, yeah, but thank you to everyone for watching. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. But if you but if you if you like this video review, movie review, and you want to watch more reviews like this, uh, we have podcasts, live streams. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell thing so you're always updated when we release a new video. But until the next time, have a good one.